If you've turned into the Daredevil after show on AfterBuzz TV to hear us talk about the fact that there's two Daredevils running around, the fact that we now know who Matt's mom is, and all of the stuff with Poindexter, Fisk having a secret downstairs room, well, bullseye, we're going to talk about Daredevil episodes 5 through 8 tonight on AfterBuzz TV. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. I see you guys shaking your heads at that dumb no. pun. Uh, you, I, was, I, I disagree. Not, I mean, I was excited. I was yes. more talking about I can see the audience shaking oh, no, their they heads. Gave it. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank the you. The text just flipped you off. They all gave you the finger. Yeah, Everybody pretty much. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed thank it. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on After Buzz TV. I'm your host, Zach Wilson. I'm so excited to talk about these episodes of Daredevil. Oh, my God. Uh, I am joined tonight by Zia Anderson. Hey, everybody. Really excited to talk about these episodes so and much. Christian Black. I'm also excited, and I'm so proud of myself for stopping at episode eight <laughs> and not knowing what comes next because I would have so much trouble stopping talking at episode eight. Jesse Klein, unfortunately, stuck at work. Aw, Josh. Has to talk about Daredevil to the wind now. So, I mean, follow him on Twitter and you can watch yeah, him do follow, that. You can follow him on Twitter and make force him to give you his opinions on these episodes at Jess Klein, one, J-S-S-K-L-E-I-N, the number one. Uh, I've heard him do it a million times, so now I know exactly how his pattern goes. Um, and stick around because we have a very exciting announcement about next episode, uh, but you'll have to hang out to find out exactly what that is. Let's dive into these episodes. We're talking about The Perfect Game, Episode 5, The Devil You Know, Episode 6, Aftermath, Episode 7, and Episode 8, Upstairs slash Downstairs. <laughs> First reactions to these episodes, guys. Uh, how are you feeling after binging these four well, first of all, they were an amazing four episodes. They crammed so much stuff into those four episodes, but it didn't feel like too much and it didn't feel like too little. They've done a perfect job with pacing in this, and I love it. And it leaves you where, you're right, Christian, it's really, really hard to stop watching because you're like, oh my, I, I have to find out what happens next. I've loved yeah. all of it so far. Oh, I, these if you guys at home haven't heard us talk about it before, <laughs> not controlling ourselves so that we're not watching ahead when we do these after shows is so difficult. Yes. Like, personally, I'm thankful that the, that Sabrina dropped this weekend because at least I can be like, well, okay, I can't watch more Daredevil because I have to wait for the after show, but I can watch more Sabrina. But these episodes <laughs> were great. The, um, like, it was just the, this season so far, like eight episodes in, is... For me, so much stronger than season two. Definitely. Structurally. Yeah. Like, I know that some people may prefer the Punisher plot line, or they, they may have enjoyed, like, Matt and Electra's like, dynamic, but I, I we talked about it on the show last season. Like, I thought season two had, a, had some, like, problems where it had, like, two different seasons going on that were crammed into each other that, like... I can see how they were playing off of each other, but they were not like really interconnected. It was just like the fact that Matt had Matt would like go over here and talk to the old Punisher, and then he would go over here and talk with the Hand, and then he would go over here and be doing this thing. And the, it was just like two completely separate worlds. But this is one storyline with all of these characters, and as far apart as they might get, they're all part of the same plot, and it, I, it's built structurally phenomenal like the writing to make all that work is really strong well and for me the biggest knock on season two is not enough wilson fisk you know i mean he was barely in it and season one was so great because he's so great so to get so much of him even even when he's not in scene even when you don't see him for episode time for like 20 minutes everything that happens goes right back to him. And oh, it's, it, it's so well done that literally everything ties back to the Kingpin. Everything, especially with Agent Poindexter, like oh. it all, it, it, when Fisk isn't there, he's just, like, you feel his presence because everything that's happening, you know, is his manipulation. At yeah, work. I definitely, these four episodes went on a bit of a roller coaster with uh, with Agent Poindexter. I was, yeah. oh I was on his you side. You could say that. I was on his side. And then I was like, oh, you're a creeper. And like I was saying just before we started, a box full of kittens? No, sir. That is never okay. I am not Too your far. friend. Too, Too yeah, far. Exactly. Too um, far. Well, let's start off talking about Agent Poindexter. This is a good point of any because it's a major part of these episodes. Obviously, yeah. 
Um, Wilson Fisk, like I think he was, it was good to sort of take him away for a season and have Daredevil and Matt deal with other things, mm-hmm. and then he had to deal with obviously what happened to the Defenders, and now, but now coming like Wilson Fisk having gone away and having to come back into the picture, I think it make it's what made him even scarier in this season mm-hmm. because he seemed like it, you felt like he went away that he wasn't a threat anymore until he was even and now that he's even more of a threat he's it's like, even scarier he's like sauron he was just gathering his army of darkness <laughs> slowly in the shadows before he you know pounced again that's a super weird analogy <laughs> but it is also perfectly appropriate um but with but with poindexter as the like active like building the the more active villain in the season like in these episodes where it's sort of come to a head i like what they've done with bullseye is i think phenomenal i think it's a great way of dealing with this character the idea of making him an actual psychopath like where the his like psychiatrist it's like psychopathic tendencies like mm-hmm. right there in writing yeah and like, oh, tell me more. And like, yeah, you just you see like, oh my god, this kid could kill me. And just the the little nod when you know he's uh, we see him on the mound and he has the little bullseye hat. You know, I like love yeah, that, that was cute. Yeah. A great touch. And yeah, it's uh, every you know everything that we saw from him in the first four episodes. You're like, okay, yeah, I think that this can work. But yeah, these are the episodes where you're like. Oh my God! They're just going all in on all of this, and uh, you know when we get to the point that he shows up at the newspaper when we start talking about that, that's just like Oof. that's well again that's like Fisk's brilliance, you know, an evil mastermind. But uh, just like oh yeah, that's because that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting he was going to show up in a in a different outfit, you know, not the Daredevil outfit. So uh, I I don't know, I didn't see that coming, and. Uh, it's it. I just watching what is happening to this this poor guy who needs the kind of help that someone other than Wilson Fisk should be giving him. Yeah, I mean he's like when his when his therapist like that's I I just found his story really fascinating and it's it, and unique in in a lot of ways like the idea of somebody going into therapy and like successfully dealing with all of these things. Although I will say. Uh, how bad are the FBI's background checks? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up because absolutely. They is that something that just doesn't get released because but he literally murdered someone. It's a juvenile juvenile record and that specific fact they would would never have been in public. Like you what you say the, between the, the record would FBI. be sealed but to to your point Zach, the record would be sealed but to Zia's point you're the FBI. You can unseal things. You can find. You know. You can dig deep enough. And it's more. It's, like, it's more that he was in therapy through being an adult. And being in yeah. therapy does not mean that like you should be disqualified from no, jobs. But not. Yeah. he is on medication, which yeah. is yeah. tracked. And that's that's that was the only thing. It's like you're talking about an agency that denied some a, a skilled agent a promotion because of his credit <laughs> score. Right. And like you, but like so that was just like a one one of those things. It's like. Uh, you, you twisted your your reality the, a little bit, not enough that it really bothered me, but no, that but like think about it. A guy on on a psych, uh, medicine for uh, I don't know what you would call it, for for, a, for psychotic te- yeah antipsychotics yeah. would never have been allowed into especially a field. I was going to say yeah, like no. you could have a desk job probably, but you certainly wouldn't be a field agent. Yeah. But mm-hmm. also, but here's the thing: he has his track record from the military. And what they wanted him for is what he can do. He so just, they were pro- there's probably somebody who shouldn't have looked the other way who did. Was maybe. Just like, he just look, performed look, too they, well. They said he was a sniper. And it's like, well, that's a highly trained, very useful skill to have. Yeah, but he's not working SWAT. He's working... Yeah, but I, but yeah, that, that's what we see him doing now. So who knows what... You know what doors got closed uh, for the sake of you yeah. know moving him. Fair along. enough. Fair enough. Uh, just really quick in the chat because uh, it's sort of very obvious, but I thought it was funny that Rory Fansler says, "I like this bullseye better than the movie one." I hope so. <laughs> I hope everybody oh God. comes like, away from this. You know, if there is anything that you liked more from the Ben Affleck Daredevil story. Then this show, I seriously want to know what it was. I mean, I like John Favreau as Foggy, right? <laughs> oh my god, I, I forgot yeah. that so that was. So much of that from my mind. <laughs> and look, Michael Clark movie. Duncan as the Kingpin. Nowhere near the great take that we get here. I thought it was fun, but anyway, we don't, we shouldn't get bogged down. It's on not that like I, I, look, we're, that's an easy target, but like, yeah. <laughs> so is um, Bullseye. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, okay. All right, back back to these episodes because <laughs> yes. uh, we got a lot a lot yeah, to a cover. Lot, yeah. um, 
But I like with as long as we're talking about Poindexter, we have to talk about the big scene, which was the attack on the bulletin. Which, wow! I mean, like obviously it wasn't necessarily known what was going to happen last week, but us having to of just the timing of us watching these episodes, covering these episodes right after the CNN yeah. threat, felt felt like prophetic. And I, in a way where it's like, I like the news media has been under attack in certain ways sure. for, for a while now, but that just timed very weirdly. But that was, it made that for me, like just, it was one of those, like the real world coming into this show in a major way. And that made, and that scene was so scary and effective because like, these are, these are not FBI agents who have put themselves in danger. These are not criminals. Like, it, like we often deal with like even like criminals that are like on our side or like people that are actively fighting. These are journalists, just like at their desk. What was the most moving moment, or just the most impactful moment for me, especially that I almost got a little bit teary, was the moment where all of the cell phones were in yes. the bags. And it was all the family all members the texts, calling. Like, hey, are you okay? The and, yeah. way they did that, oh my god, that was I, of the series so far. And we've the all most sent those texts, like whenever of a course. loved one is just like happens to be in a city or near a city, and you, it's just like it's a quick way to just check in and be like, hey, just I mean, tell me, or not, like the mm-hmm. Facebook little like mark yourself safe kind of thing. Not to get right totally sidetracked but i knew someone who i knew they were at that concert in las vegas because of the job they have so like i knew he was there you know and i texted him i heard back from him that night but it's like so it actually made me think about that that's why i'm bringing it up and yeah but yeah it's the same thing like oh something happened in the city you were in you never know when somebody's near that and that was so like to zia's point it's so effective you just all the cell phones at once and you can just see the impact it has on karen because She's alive and uh, doesn't know why. In all honesty, you know, I mean, at that it's point. clearly part. Yeah, that that's point. what I mean. At right. that moment, I think yeah. she has an has an inkling that it's to do with with yeah, like because of like I mean, Fisk knew exactly what he was doing. Like he had he he fed Poindexter just the right line mm-hmm. to go up and say it as if he like knew, was familiar with Karen because he knows that Karen and, and Daredevil have this past, That's even it. if he doesn't. And we have to correct ourselves from last week when we like we were talking and we were like, oh, like he totally like they he to, they in that season two. I was so I'll own this. I was <laughs> so wrong. About what? Because I I misremembered season two that with, you thought with that was a while Fisk. Ago. Yeah, no, no. But yeah. we were we were all we're confused. Yeah. As yeah. To what but happened. I was the one that brought it up, yeah. and I will I will admit here on this podcast that I was wrong. <laughs> There's only so much memory that I can have about all the different versions of these characters and, and so when who shows. knows who. Yeah. Anyway. And not to mention with the comics also. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that movie we keep talking about that really confuses yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. Uh, like finishing up with like what what point actually was like once he like the other big plot line for him was Julie oof. and like oh. oof wow that like that went for we were uh, this was not at all like I guess we we were talking about pieces of this like that like they knew each other it wasn't a former girlfriend but it was like a former colleague that yeah. he like had known and they had never been close but he had looked at her as his guiding his north star sorry yeah yeah um. Which was way less creepy than we thought. Yeah. In it's fairness. Still creepy, but still, you're right. It wasn't creepy. what we thought it he, was. He, w- it, he was doing it with no intention of ever bothering her. Right. That's the key difference that makes it like less creepy. Like It was still weird, but he was never going to bother her or like make trouble for her. Or it, like, that was, at least that was his intention, was to never interact with her, he just, just to needed- like see that a person could be that good. Yeah. And so to believe that, and that's something I, that was, it's actually sort of almost like admirable. And like, we could all like, t- like from that point of his thing, we could all like take a page from, yeah. is like looking around you and seeing the people that are good, the people and how they are good and seeing that and own and like, seeing, like, well, I can be that good because that person is, I can pick, right. take what I've learned from watching them and make it a part of myself. It's like having a role model. That was sort of like his role model that he was watching. And he's such an interesting character, the way they do that, because he's clearly a psychopath. He clearly wants to hurt and murder people. But there's that other part of him that's still trying. 
and he wants to keep some semblance of normalcy in his life. And it's so interesting the way they did that with his back and forth. So it shows that even though he has psychopathic tendencies, he still has, at least he wants to have a conscience. And it's really interesting the yeah, way they did that. When we see him working at the suicide prevention hotline and he's like, oh, uh-huh. yeah, what kind of gun do you have? Yeah. I'm like, oh, dude. no!" And then he's like, oh, wait, Julie's coming. Oh, yeah, let me, you know, that snaps out of it. And when you're seeing that, you're like, oh, he got caught. But then it's like, no, no, no. He's reminded that he should probably be a good person. And, I don't uh, know. Yeah, I don't know that the suicide hotline oh, was, that wasn't like, a good place, a good for, him. place no. for him to be. Not. Like, who, who thought of that? Let us just tell you how hard it is to find choice. people to do the suicide prevention. Fair line. enough. Yeah. And just they're very quickly, their little hangout, just so uncomfortable to watch. And it's just like, stop giving away that you know things about her that you shouldn't know. Stop talking. He just can't. And uh, I don't know. It was, uh, it was, I didn't hate him yet because I hadn't heard about the Look, the anyone who's, yet. who's Googled a date before you go, go on that first meeting uh-huh. with them, it's the same thing. You're like, okay, I got to remember what we've t- actually <laughs> talked about. <laughs> I have only done it like know. twice, but like I've Googled people before a first date. You know, sometimes it's important, especially as a woman, just in general, you probably should just do a quick check just so you know who you're going to meet up with. Yeah. Just to make sure that the guy you're sitting down <laughs> yeah. with didn't kill his coach with a baseball. Yeah. Well, it's just like if they tweeted like, like, man, I really hate X TV show, you can be like, okay, I'm not going to mention that TV show. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's the little things yeah. to know. Anyway, um, but yeah, he did it real bad. Yeah, real yeah, bad. No, that was terrible. Um, I did like his like attempt to like make up for it, though. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, it got her killed. Yeah. And that was a, I don't know why, that, that hit was like one of the more painful ones that I've seen on the show. And it's like, it's not like we haven't seen them kill innocent people all over the place. But that one was just, it was so surprising. Cause I like, I don't know why I didn't see it coming. Of course it's going to happen. But like it, it caught me off guard in the moment. And it was just like, she genuinely like was able to like, look at this person and say, okay, this guy needs help. And it's really uncomfortable for me to help him, but he clearly needs that. And she was like willing to try to help. And it was so offhand the way it happens. It's like on the screen, the Fisk is watching and it's not like, you know, our attention's not necessarily all the way on it. It's like, hey, did the landlord send you guys, you know, bullet, bullet. And then he holds up the phone like, yeah, this is what you wanted. And that, that's it. And I'm like, oh, OK, bye, Julie. Like it's yeah. like that lack of importance of her towards Fisk just says everything that you need to know. It's like, well, this is just one of many pieces that I'm trying to move at the same time. And she just had also she had so little to do with anything. She yeah. she was she wasn't in anything. She wasn't it was it was literally just Fisk trying to manipulate this one character and take him down a path, the path that he wanted him to go down. And this poor girl was literally just collateral damage. Yeah. Um and yeah, I mean uh that's the that's the Poindexter storyline right there. Like yeah. I wanted to jump in on him first because as our first topic. There's so because, much, yeah. Yeah, the like and he these were like really his the way his episode shined. The I like before we move on to uh, a, a, a quick word about After Buzz. Um, I just wanted to mention those flashback scenes when Fisk is reading his files because I. This is a, a really it, I've seen similar things done with like with with this where you like take a an outside like you put pieces of uh, a flashback scene into the environment that your character yeah. that's flashing back is in but like this one it just it was really effective it was a, I thought it was a really cool way to do it it was very well done I was really impressed with mm-hmm. how that uh, unfolded for sure yeah but real quick let's get a quick word about how you can help us here at Afterbuzz TV out from Zia Anderson. Yeah, After Buzzers. Our network produces after shows for nearly all of your favorite TV shows, from dramas, reality TV, sci-fi, and more. There is no network that works hardest, harder to serve television fans. But we need your help. We're asking that you please subscribe to one or more, or more of our YouTube channels. By subscribing to our channel, YouTube will suggest content that is tailor-made for you, and you'll help AfterBuzz continue to grow. And if you're worried about pesky notifications, do not be, because they're optional. You can turn them off. It's perfect. Um, so hit that, hit that subscribe button now for this channel, and check out our other AfterBuzz YouTube channels as well. We have so many. Let us know you did so in the comments, and we'll thank you on air. For now, thank you for being the best fans and for helping us be the ESPN of TV Talk. 
Yeah, and another way that you can get a great shout out is uh, here on the show is to go on to iTunes. We're gonna do, try to get these in at some point soon, uh, just because there's so much to cover on these shows. But another great way to help out is go on to iTunes, hit us with a rating, a review. It only you only have to put in a few words. You could just say, "I like this." It's that easy. <laughs> I like Daredevil. Daredevil is good, and like leave that as a review. That helps us out. And hitting a rating, it just helps other people find the show. It's a great way to help AfterBuzz, helps to keep these light bulbs electrified, and uh, helps us make the best shows that you can get. All right. Let's talk about Matt Murdock. He's dealing with a lot. Oh, <laughs> There's a lot. He's yeah. dealing with a lot. Where we last left him was flying <laughs> off a pier yep. into the water. And I love that we didn't see him for like an entire episode. Um, like I'm we sure obviously... Charlie Cox was really happy about that. <laughs> he got a, like, got a <laughs> day off. A break. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he enjoyed it. But um, yeah, I thought that was really effective. Like we, we know that he survived, obviously, but the mystery of it. Yeah, it was more of like, okay, how, where, you know, how did he get out? Where did he go? You know, yeah. why haven't we seen him? And he's like him? really messed up at that point. Yeah. Right. Uh, That's after... all I'm wondering throughout the entire season is how messed up is Matt now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy has been bloodied oh. and beaten in so much of a way. It would really help if there was a monitor on the screen, like a video game that lets you knew, know where his life was. Was. His you know, bar. it's like, oh, yeah, it's like, yeah, the health bar. bar is like really low at this point, but he's gonna have to take on Dex anyway. Like, so. he's had like n no time to heal. No. A building fell on him like yes. two weeks ago. And yeah. he can't stop. If that, if that, <laughs> um, but like, he's he's up and he's up and fighting. Um, I really liked, uh, I like the whole thing. Like once he got into the fight with Bullseye, that whole fight sequence was really cool. The like and it like the imagery of old Daredevil yeah. versus new Daredevil um, costume wise was just like this is cool. Yeah, this I is like nerdy that. and cool. <laughs> the interesting thing too is that it really showcased just how much more advanced Matt was than Dex. That if it wasn't for Dex's little gimmick with the you know the ricochet. Daredevil would have probably kicked his ass in like a well, minute, mm -hmm. but because he had this advantage, you know that's how you know he was able to get away. Because when they're actually fighting hand to hand, you know Dex is good, but it's like nothing compared to what Matt can do. Well, and I think a lot of that also had to do with the fact that Matt wasn't expecting that. He yeah. didn't know that that was coming because later when they fight again, that little ricochet trick isn't working as well because Matt is aware. He he knows it's coming now. He knows what his little trick is. Yeah. But at first, he's like, what is happening right now? But it's also like, it's that classic, like, advantage, disadvantage thing. Like, it's just strategy. Like, if, yeah. if Dex can keep his distance, like, if Bullseye can keep his distance from Daredevil, like, he's got the advantage. But if Daredevil can manage to slip past the projectiles and get in there, then suddenly, hand-to-hand, -hand, in close range, he's got the upper hand. But so it becomes this game of, like, okay, can I get back far enough to start to, to get to gain that advantage back? Can I get in close enough to take my advantage like it, and i think that's a really cool way and yeah. it's a really good reason why these are two as far as like like fisk and daredevil have like that great like dichotomy of they both have a similar goal of like protecting the city but they have completely different methods but this is two people this is just like on a pure fighting sense like the their their fighting styles have different like the how they fight is going to change and it's interesting because there has to be a strategy it's not just ninja versus ninja right can, can you block my flying tiger kick yeah absolutely and i love it's a lot of why i love the ufc because it's similar to someone with a good stand-up game versus someone with a good ground game with good takedown and good takedown defense it's very similar and it's sure. very, it's way, way more exciting to watch. Sure. Than that's, just like, you know. I'm sure it is. I, that's, <laughs> those are probably all things that are in UFC. <laughs> yeah, that, that was my internal dialogue, what Zach just said. I was just like, I'm like, she knows what she's talking about. I'm just going to nod because I know I'm in her shot. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I do want to talk about the, the whole Melvin Potter thing. And this is, again, Fisk is just so far ahead yeah um i mean foggy even says that he's i think it was foggy who says he's five, five moves ahead of yeah us. yeah mm -hmm. yeah 
But um, one little detail that I really appre- I, I, I liked with with Melon Potter is if you looked at his um his shirt that he was wearing that yellow mesh I was like that's a weird shirt. Oh, it's his gladiator uniform. Like that, oh. like his Melvin Potter in the comics is is a is a villain called Gladiator or an antihero. I forget. I am a character. Of yeah, gladiator, but it's, yeah. it's Gladiator, I didn't catch and he that, has this. Like, it's a yellow costume. And it has these three black like rhombuses or whatever, and it's the same. He's wearing the Gladiator like costume tee, basically. Um, it was a cool little throwaway detail, but the idea that like he was using Melvin to set up, yeah, Matt in that way having the second costume already made and ready, probably sized format mm-hmm. um, so that it would fit him perfectly. It wouldn't be like, this isn't quite the right size. That that seems odd. Uh, no, it's probably he made one for Matt and made one for Poindexter. Yeah. Um, and then, but like, and we, we met Betsy. Yeah. Uh, not Betsy. what I was expecting that no. character to be, which was cool. That Like, Betsy is his parole officer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I definitely <laughs> liked her interaction with Matt in the later episode, you know, where he's just like, hey, you should run away. And she's just like, you know, hey, what you're doing is actually not cool. You know, like you didn't stand up for him. She's not know? wrong. No, she's definitely I not was, wrong. I was definitely a little bit disappointed in Matt in that moment. I think it was an Owen situation. He couldn't have, he couldn't have gotten him to, I think. I he mean, that's the thing. It's like, it, it sucks, but I don't know how, yeah, I don't know how Matt plays that situation any better, especially like, Melvin betrayed him. And I get that, like, he was in, Melvin was, like, he's in a bad, like, situation with Fisk, and, like, there's almost no good out at that point. But. I get it. But the unfortunate thing yeah. is, if it's, if it's someone that you love, sorry, if someone was, you know. I get why she's mad I, at him. I also yeah. get why Matt, like, is like, what, what could I possibly, what else could I possibly <laughs> right. have done? At least he went to go warn her. We'll say that. He yeah. went to go warn her. That was good. Um. Did you guys think that Matt should have, like, so he went to turn himself in mm-hmm. before at, at the bulletin. Did you guys think that was that it, it was a good idea to turn himself in? It seemed like his only play. It would have been a good play had they had had Fisk not been involved, but that was never going to happen. And I feel like they should have seen that coming. Yeah, the way that it was mapped out, I think, absolutely made sense, and it was what he had to do, but. Knowing what we knew, even going into that, we're like, this isn't going to work out. He no. can't do that. But I understood the decision that he made and why Karen thought it was so important and why he was willing to do it for her. But no, I I, I did not think it was a good idea, nor did I think it was actually going to happen. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's But now it's the question of, now he's working with the FBI, with yeah. Agent Nadim. I was really happy about that, by the way. I was really excited when Agent Nadim started <coughs> working with him. Yeah. I was like, yes, finally. Because he, he, real, he, he like fully realizes in these episodes, yes. like, oh, we, we all got played. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was not expecting him to come to that realization at this point, knowing no. it's a 13-episode season. So mm-hmm. I figured he was just going to be like, yeah, whatever, you know, and just kind of keep on getting information out of Fisk. So I thought it was a really cool dynamic and, you know, you know, Matt showing up at his house definitely had to freak him out, you know, but uh, I did like to see them working together. And mm-hmm. uh, I like, I, I don't know, I like where it's going, at least at this point. Uh, yeah, I like how involved this character has been. Like, when you, whenever you introduce a new character like this, it's always sort of questionable, like, okay, so who is this guy? Why should we care? Yeah. Um, but I think the show's done a great job of letting, a, of, we, we're into this character and we mm-hmm. care about him enough. We see his side. We know that he's, like, trying his best here. Like, whether you agree with all of his decisions, like, that's a different story. But, like, this guy is trying to do the right thing, yeah. which is not true of a lot of characters in this show. Right. Like, yeah. uh, people have selfish motives, and, like, uh, or, and even the people who are fighting the good fight, like, as we transition over to Foggy, even, like, in their ideas, it's just like, are you crazy? Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> um, but, like, between Karen and Foggy, do you think... Do you guys think that the, either one is crazy or are they both playing the smart game? I think Foggy is playing the slightly smarter game. Um, the only thing I'll say for that is, I'm because I love Foggy so much, I'm nervous for him because now he's opening himself up to Fisk. He's making himself a target, and that makes me nervous. But I still think that he because he's, it's so public, he's still playing the smarter game than Karen. Karen is acting on more emotion, I feel, 
and she's she definitely flying off the handle a little bit, and she's doing things that aren't necessarily logical because she's, you know, very emotional. Yeah, I mean, Karen's <laughs> just going for, like, shock and awe, like yeah. dropping bombs anywhere she can to just, you know, basically see what she can get done. Foz, Fozzy. Foggy is at least just like reason. Yeah, waka waka. He's just <laughs> reasoned out. Like, he knows what he's doing, and he is at least calm. Like, you know, we see him obsessing about figuring out what Fisk is doing, but he's like, all right, I have this information. I know what I'm going to do with it. You know, it isn't like, I feel like if Karen had that information, she would, like, knock on Fisk's door and be like, I know what you're doing! Hi! <laughs> you know, and he's like, all right, I'm going to play this cool. And, you know, him, sp him basically running for district attorney, knowing he's not going to win i think is very smart except for the part where like fisk already knew who you were you were probably on his radar and something bad could happen to you but you're definitely setting up all of your people you know the whole family the whole deli everything marcy especially marcy now that he said he wanted to marry her i, I was saying to zach and zia before <laughs> we started i was like oh and keep in mind i haven't seen any more episodes so i have no idea if this happens or not but when he said that i'm like Oh no, Marcy's gonna die, isn't she? Because he said no! he wanted to marry her. We like her now. <laughs> I do, but I was just convinced she was gonna die. He's like, I was like, this is the only reason you have a character saying, "Hey, we should get married." Okay, see you later. Like I thought she was gonna die that episode. So. I actually think, actually, my instincts tell me she's gonna be okay. I hope so. Um, I hope you're right. I, it's just gonna get real complicated when Foggy does win. <laughs> Yeah, what he's how he's not supposed to because yeah. you saw all those people filming him on their cell phones. Like yeah. it was very mm -hmm. clear that these people were gonna post this, and this was gonna get this is gonna go and, viral, mm -hmm. and like all of a sudden this write-in campaign is gonna be going w really well. way more more effective than getting an article in a newspaper in 2018. Yeah, having yes. all those people film it and post it online, that's gonna get way more attention than a, than a newspaper, even in yeah. New York City. I definitely yeah. don't think that Karen not being there really affected his no, plan at I, I all. I think you're yeah. right, yeah. I mean, for, a, like, a district attorney who is a was a public defender, like, defended the, mm -hmm. like, did tons of pro bono cases, like, fought, like, uh, is known for having, like, been on the side of, like, the people, mm -hmm. has the backing of the police union, and now is going to have a viral video of him, like, calling out the other guy. Yeah. He's got a shot at the very oh, least. Yeah. And in TV world, he's primed to <laughs> accidentally win, especially because he said in that speech, I don't expect to win. Yeah. And that Foggy got that job. That is definitely something that will appeal to people. It's like, look at him. He's running anyway. You know what? He's going to get my vote. Why not? Let me yeah. write him in. Yeah. In fact, if there's anything that I can vote for on Election Day coming up, if there's a write-in, I'm going to go ahead and vote for Foggy Nelson. Write in Foggy Nelson yeah. for DA. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't actually do it. Don't. Like, <laughs> I, votes go matter. vote. Your votes but, matter. But don't, not for Foggy. Don't, not don't for do Foggy. that. Yeah. But the fake people in New York vote for Foggy. Um... <laughs> Karen on the like Karen where Foggy has like a good plan he seems to be following it as close as he can Karen's just like flying by the seat of oh. her pants like and she's dealing with a lot like oh, my heart broke when she calls her dad oh, and her God, dad yeah. she's just like I need can I please just come home for a little while and it's like it's another timing is not and we right. had just like, seen oh. her put the root into her phone so she was like ready to do the drive oh. and then he's like yeah it's not a good time but uh, you can call anytime but just don't come here. Yeah, that Ugh. that was rough. I know it was a rough. These four episodes were really rough for Karen. Yeah. And when she went to the crack house or whatever, I'm like, oh no, they're doing it. That's what I thought yeah. too. Yeah. I was I'm like, why out. are they doing like, this? What's happening? This is not Karen in yeah. the show. Not oh, in the show. You guys, not I, in the show. I don't remember exactly, but I why? But like, I definitely knew. Like, I was like, oh no, she's like doing her investigation right. and stuff. Yeah. Here. I just thought her investigation involved her getting high. So that's what that's, I thought too. I was worried that she reason, might slip, and then there yeah. was that like, oh no, she's a former egg who like is gonna try like do it one more time yeah. and that's exactly how people die yeah um that was my only concern is that she might have to like with something like oh so you use it yeah not so i don't so i know you're not a cop <laughs> uh but then jasper evans just comes out and is like what are you doing here and yeah. they, they bring him in he gets shot we already talked about the the whole scene with with bullseye but before we run out of time i, I want to make sure that we talk about fisk in oh. these episodes because fisk Run around in his white shiny suits. Yeah, love that white suit. The white yeah. suits are great. I kind of the the shiny thing looks weird to me. It's just like what kind of with you on I don't that. know what fabric this is. It looks super unclassy to me <laughs> at least. Like he looks I love like a him. And I do like, but I love the 
the fact they're putting him in, love the, in the white, white suit. suits. It's so over the top comic booky, but this character has gone so nuts that uh, I'd buy it. I totally buy oh, it. Oh, absolutely buy yeah. it. Yeah. Um, the thing I want to ask you guys about, like, we could talk, we could spend time talking about the, his secret little bunker under oh God, under his, his thing. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, and it's Dex's like, reaction explains. to it was great. Yeah. Dex was like, "This was here the whole time." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's like, just like disappointed <laughs> in yeah. like himself yeah. in yeah. that moment. Um, but I want to like I want to talk about Rabbit in a Snowstorm. Yeah, they. It seems like so minor. At this point, like it seems like it's nice. this little art thing that he's just like, oh, what, uh, Vanessa, it's from <laughs> Vanessa, and he's mad. But the they drop this fact. Oh yeah, we're taking we're uh, are we taking a look at this? That's the a, uh, that's a that's a graphic that was intended for Marvel TV Weekly side. tonight. But that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and use it, Tony. <laughs> um, yeah, that white suit. I just love that. Super. Yeah. Uh, comic book nonsense um but rabbit in a snow i'm talking about white um they drop there's a contest of ownership yes mm -hmm. they don't say who somebody has claimed that they own rabbit in a snowstorm and not wilson fisk and we if, if you don't remember rabbit in a snowstorm is that all white painting that he bought from vanessa the first time that they met back in season one and it became like a major thing for him. Like when we see him at the end of season one, like in jail, he's staring at the white on the wall because it mimics that that same painting. Right. It feels like he it, it, he it reminds him of his childhood because it's when they were face it like when he would be like forced to face the wall as a kid. A lot of stuff with that that painting. But what do you got? Do you guys have any theories on? who this might be that is contesting the ownership? The only thought I had, and it makes no sense, uh, is Vanessa. I, I don't know why. Well, we don't really know her mindset. You sure, know, I think she's on the run in Europe partially to stay alive. And maybe she just realizes, like, I kind of have to stay in this situation. My thought is Matt, because mm -hmm. he understands that it's important to him. At least that's the, what I was thinking. Uh, but he's in hiding. Like I don't know how he could possibly Without put in a arrested. legal claim like right. that. Well, he might have done right. that before. You know what I mean? It just might have been pending mm. from before Defenders. Maybe. You know, it was just like, Maybe. oh, you know, this is something that's going to bother him uh, long term. And just because we're talking about Fisk, I wanted to get in from the chat. Uh, Starman934 says, Fisk smiling at the news reports was very creepy. Yeah. It's the only time we've seen him smile this season is just Ooh. watching those news reports. Yeah. And yeah, that that was definitely very creepy. It's a great observation. Thanks, Starman. Yeah, um, I'm I'm excited to hear what your guys' theories like. Whether you leave them down in the chat or uh, leave us on the YouTube comments below or send it to us on Twitter. Like, if you haven't watched ahead, send us your theories. Don't spoil. Oh yeah, if us, you please. know what it is, don't uh, be. A jerk. We'll get there uh, next week. I, I know I'm gonna binge the next four episodes right after I leave oh, here yeah. today. Um, but. The other thing with Fisk is Karen, when she, like, it's a major emotional moment for Fisk when Karen confesses that she killed Wesley back in season one. Like, crazy. It's doing it to try, to try to get a rise out of him, basically to cause him to assault her and then, like, break his parole, like, thing, like, all of that, like, in that moment. But the thing that I feel like we're going to get that's going to, like, end up forcing him back to prison and all that is... They, they they talk about going after that the crime him of for him as a child. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've also mentioned this season that the hammer is not at the bottom of the river. No. It's in his mother's effects. Yes. Ah. She kept it and he kept it. And that's all you need. Like he literally has the murder weapon. Yes. Somewhere in his belongings. But who's it's just who's gonna, who's find, gonna it? find it? Yeah. Well, that might be Matt's play. Maybe Matt is going to find out about it and go after it. Yeah, or no, Karen. it's it's very possible. But yeah, I think that uh, we will see that. What I will say is about Karen's plan, just like, and Foggy makes the point. It's like, you know he could kill you before the FBI gets into the room, you know? And I guess she's like, yeah, but then he'd go back to jail. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know that, you know, I don't think she really thought it through all the way. And no, she, she was of course so not. <laughs> mad at Foggy yeah. for, you know, breaking it up. But it's like Foggy saved her life, basically. Yes. And my concern, and we were saying this before we started, was that 
I know she whispered it, but there are cameras and microphones there. Yes. Do you think if I whisper right now, I'm pretty sure you hear it. I so hear what you're saying. Yeah, everybody <laughs> heard me right now. Yeah, so, but the mic is two inches from your face. Like we don't know where the microphones are in that room. I do. Leslie, I did it. Oh my god, we heard it. I'm just kidding. I didn't kill anyone. But yeah, no. I, anyway, I feel like that was not like the whole thing wasn't smart. That was exceptionally not smart. There is a way to say like, oh, I he didn't suffer. And not, oh yeah, I shot him seven times with the clip got stuck and that's the only reason I didn't keep shooting him. I was like, well, that was Well, really she was specific. trying to get a rise out oh, of him. Yeah. So she was effective in that. Yes. Um, <laughs> but as we're talking about who might be the painting, like what's going to happen to Karen, that seems a perfect time to get into some quick predictions. Your there it is. TV predictions. Um, all right, guys. Um, so we're looking ahead at episodes 9 through 12. Keeping in mind that we haven't seen them, while some yes. of you in watching right now probably have, but we haven't. <laughs> what What are you thinking might be ahead in these episodes that are left? I a little bit see Matt flying off the handle as well and becoming frustrated and seeking out trying to somehow meet with Kingpin even though that would get him into trouble. And I'm worried for literally everyone's families. I'm worried for Nadim's family. I'm worried for Foggy's family. And as I mentioned, Marcy. And even Karen's dad, who doesn't want her to come visit. Well, that's not going to save his life. You know, there's there's nobody that uh, that is safe. So I like as the episodes are going along, I'm thinking of like, okay, so that's somebody who could probably get killed. Okay, this one too. And it's just it's just like... This is why, you know, the kingpin of crime gets into your life. Just move. Go to another city. You know, you just <laughs> stay out of it. Don't go visit him and try and get him angry. That's my advice. But yeah. anyway, so I feel like there's going to be some more collateral damage, and it'll be uh, very upsetting to me to watch happen. I think we're going to get my, my one prediction. I'm going to say, I think we're going to get another big bullseye daredevil showdown. Oh, I can't and wait And somehow that. that bullseye, that, that circle from the baseball cap is going to get carved into his face. Base. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I hope so anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be crazy. Um, but I promised you guys a an announcement yes. at the end of this episode. Yeah. And I'm really excited because next episode, as we discuss episodes 9 through 12, we are going to be joined in studio by Jay Ali, a.k.a. Agent Nadir. Nadim. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Agent Nadim. Jay Ali will be joining us in studio to talk about his role and his time on Daredevil next week at 8 p.m. <laughs> Thank you, studio audience. <laughs> Thank it's, all right. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> trying to wrap up the show. Man, uh, put your top back on. So, yeah. Uh, 8 p.m. Pacific time, or you can catch it afterwards on iTunes, Spotify, all the places that you normally watch their, or listen to this show. Um, so, with that, thank you guys so much for joining us here on the Daredevil After Buzz TV After Show. I've been your host, Zach Wilson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson, T H A T Z A C H W I L S O N. Uh, also, be sure to check out the Doctor Who After Show. Uh, stay, stick around for some other announcements coming down the pipeline. Be sure to check out my own podcast, Ships in the Night, where we talk about weird shipping from different fictional characters. This week, we have Mark B. Donica, who you may know oh, if you've yeah. been listening to this show for a long time. And trust me, this episode gets super weird in ways you will never expect called ships in the night zia hey uh, everyone you can find me on twitter and instagram at zia underscore land it's xia underscore land and also for the doctor who after show right after this and then right after that with christian the marvel tv weekly after show at 10 p.m and you can find me on twitter and instagram at christian dmz and i have a personal podcast called the Blackcast. b-l-a-d-t-c-a-s-t dot com we just did our 300th episode today and uh, you can uh, watch that it was from a studio that looks suspiciously like this one uh, and you can watch that at black Cast.com, so uh, find us there. All right, guys. This has been the Daredevil After Show on AfterBuzz TV. Thanks for geeking out with us. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.